So we're here this morning, gonna talk a little bit about fuel treatments. So most of the equipment that comes into the shop here, I'd say probably 90% of it has fuel in it that is either phase separated or not optimal for performance. So we're gonna go over these treatments and show you what each one will do to that phase separated or that poor quality fuel as it's in your equipment without draining it or anything. So I've seen a lot of these tests and most people will use regular fuel and go ahead and put water in it. Well, the water has chlorine and other chemicals to keep it, to keep it good. I'm not sure how that reacts with the rest of this. So what we're gonna do here is we've got some phase separated fuel. This is actual phase separated fuel. So you get your fuel from the gas station and what happens is within about 30 to 60 days, it starts to break down. So the alcohol solution in it, which is the ethanol, will start to separate out as soon as the fuel gets too much water in it. So it, the fuel is, I'd say like an amphibious, uh, I think they call it hy hygroscopic solution so what that means is that it's going to gather water from anything near it so it's thirsty for water even if it can't hold the water it still will draw more so some people say that it draws from the air and things like that it, it, it's normally from temperature difference of the air from the inside to the outside of the tank is what normally will draw more more moisture and then as soon as that fuel reaches oversaturation, the water will separate all the way out so it'll separate to the bottom with the alcohol and take some of the octane from the fuel at the top along with it. And from there, most of the time you're pumping off the bottom of your tank, you're pumping this out. So a lot of these fuel treatments claim to do different things to get your equipment started once it's not working correctly. So again, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start off and we're gonna go ahead and add some regular fuel to these eight ounce containers. And the reason we're doing that is the water needs somewhere to go. This water is not gonna be able to, in an oversaturated solution, it's not gonna be able to repopulate that water. And it doesn't really matter what you add to it. You need somewhere for that water to go. So we're gonna start off here. And we're gonna add four ounces of regular fuel. And this is, a, this is an E10 blend, so it does have alcohol in it also. But we're going to start with four ounces in each one of these and from there we're going to add three ounces of the less than less than optimal fuel out of the top of one of these so we're, we'll stay away from the water in the bottom but we'll add the fuel out of the top we're going to add three ounces of that on top of them and then we're gonna put some of the alcohol water mix from the bottom of one of these in there. And what that's basically simulating is you putting good E10 right on top of that bad fuel. That's what almost all people do is they'll go to start their equipment and when it doesn't start, the first thing they do is add new gas. They're not adding ethanol free nine times out of 10. So they're gonna add some, some E10 here, which is what we bought. Went and got it yesterday. And just for visual and everything here, we're gonna go ahead and add some food coloring. Now this, the food coloring will go to the water. So it does have water in it, the food coloring does, but it will go to the water. So now that we've got that there, we're gonna pull, I'm gonna pull out of the same container on this. And I'm gonna mix it all together. <clears throat>
we're just getting the, we're taking the good fuel off the top here and we're gonna mix three ounces of that right in with the other. So I've dumped a little bit of it there. And just dumping off the top, when it's nice and settled, the water will stay at the bottom. So you're gonna be dumping the good fuel off. I just want it all mixed up real good. Since we have it mixed up good there, I'm just gonna pull it out with a turkey baster here and I'm gonna throw three ounces into each one of these. Not anything too fancy, obviously, but this is a good simulation that'll show you how, and you can see already how the how at the bottom, the food coloring is starting to dissipate out there. So it's starting to attract to the water in there and separate on out to the sides. Because there is a lot of water in this fuel here. And it's not really water, it's just fully saturated at this point. Just enough. So we're looking pretty good there as far as level goes. I'm just checking them here from the bottom just to see if there's any that could use. It looks like this one could use just a just a spritz. This one could use just a spritz to kind of level them all out there. Alright. That's looking pretty good. So next, we'll take some water off of the bottom of one of these. So the sea foam here. It's a 16 ounce container, motor treatment. It says it's for gas and diesel engines. A lot of people use this for quick action is what they call it. And that's when you're adding it to the gas when there's an issue. So it says for regular fuel system maintenance, add one ounce per gallon. When a greater cleaning concentration is needed, add two or more ounces per gallon. So we're gonna figure this on two ounces per gallon for the seafoam. On the sea foam, it costs about $10.29. Uh, we'll treat about 16 gallons at that rate. So we did the math out, and they want you to use, for two ounces a gallon, 3.69 milliliters per eight ounces here. So we're going to, once we get the water in here, we're going to go ahead and take the 3.69 milliliter and add it to this and see what that does. And we're going to do that across the board for each and every one of these. Let me get the one here with the most water. So we're going to pull off the bottom here. And when we did the math on it, so if we're figuring 217 total milliliter here, 11 milliliters is going to be about 5% water, which any solution like this should be able to hold anyway. Normally they won't though. So. That's what we're gonna do is we're gonna go 11 milliliter in each one of these. And that is the alcohol water mix off the bottom there. And I'm taking it out of here, taking it out of the, the one here. So you see as that goes in there, you see how that turns blue there? So that's five, I'll do five in each one here first. You know that's turning blue as it's going down in there? And I'm trying to pull from right just from the middle of this solution here as I go across. I want to make sure that I want to make sure that no matter what, we've got the same amount in all of these and kind of the same quality of water. So if we've only got maybe 15 milliliters here, or I'm sorry, about an ounce or so here, I could pull off of one of the other ones. So I'm doing essentially right now five milliliters each time that I'm doing this out of a dropper. So you can see how that's just changing each time there. Alright. So that's five milliliters of fluid in there. You can see kind of how it's 
across each time you put it in it kind of blends with the food coloring and goes all the way across the bottom there I'm not sure on this one I'm gonna have enough water in it or not so maybe I'll pull the rest of the water from this one over here and these are all jars I've got four of them here these are all jars that I've got out of a John Deere tractor that we did a service on here it came in it wouldn't start they ran the battery low so it froze but all of this fuel is out of that same tractor it's phase separated fuel so now we've put five milliliters in each one of these of, of the water alcohol mix so far we're gonna put another five And again, I'm pulling, pulling right from the middle of this as I'm in here. I'm trying to get this as even as possible to make this as real world of a test as possible. So this is gonna, this is gonna simulate what happens when you throw that fuel right back down in there when you really know you probably shouldn't have, you know. And a lot of these are claiming to fix that. So we're looking pretty pretty even across with all the water in the bottom there. I'm going to put one more milliliter here. I'm going to go with a different one yet and still for this last milliliter. I, think I might pull off the bottom of the, this one here. So one milliliter left each. And again, so this ends up being approximately a 5% solution of water in there. And that's the water alcohol mix that's at the bottom. That's what we're using here as opposed to anything else. So, so these here, the water is in there. If we try to mix it up or anything like that, it's not going to mix. So you can see that's a saturated solution. So that's... That fuel is fully saturated at this point. The water will not mix through it. Hence, like a phase separated fuel. Even if you put good fuel back in there that should be able to absorb that solution, you know, with this only being a 5% solution, that other ethanol solution, the E10 that we put in there, that E10 should be able to absorb all that water. And it's not. That water's just floating around in there. We're going to try to stir these up, so it wouldn't matter what you did here at all, it's still going to go right back to that, still going to go right back to being separated. So we're going to test all these out and figure it out. Again, the seafoam, uh, 16 ounces, about 1029 as far as price goes, treats about 16 gallons. That's going to be 3.69 milliliters per 8 ounce container. And that obviously is a tiny bit strong because we only have seven ounces in here. Eight ounces is a, is a nice thing and overdosing them, all of them say they don't hurt. So with the seafoam here, we're gonna start off. It does not claim on here to reverse phase separation. Let's make that very clear. Some of these things do claim to prevent ethanol problems and fix ethanol problems. This one does not. It doesn't say anything about that at all. So, but many people swear by it. Many people say that it, it fixes issues after things have been sitting for a long time. So it says 3.69 milliliters here. So we're gonna take it. We're gonna do about, I don't know, right there on it. 
and add it in there. Looks like some action out of the bottom there. We've got some action in the bottom, but when it went in there, but it didn't seem to really do anything. Yes, you can see the water will the water will mix and cloud up there for a minute most times. But it looks like it just separates right back out to the bottom every time. So no matter what, you're still looking at water on the bottom there. Next one here, we've got Startron. It's an enzyme fuel treatment. <clears throat> This is an 8 ounce container. It was $10.29 also. It claims to treat 48 gallons. At the 48 gallon treatment rate, that's 0.616 milliliters per 8 ounces. So, we're going to open this here. We're going to test this Startron out. We've, we used to use Startron for quite a while. It seems to help with storage of fuel and to prevent things from happening as quickly. And that's what we've seen. And a lot of fuel treatments will prevent things from happening as quickly, but do they actually work when you've got an inferior fuel to begin with, is the question. This one here works in all gas engines, overdosing not harmful. Add Startron just before each fuel fill up, remove cap and pour the prescribed amount into tank. Overdosing is not harmful. Add one fluid ounce for every three gallons of gasoline. Refills, add one fluid ounce for every six gallons of gasoline. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna do the one for every three. That's for our initial dosage here, which equals out to 0.616 milliliters per eight ounce on the Startron. And that's one ounce per three gallons. So 0.616 milliliters, that's not a whole heck of a lot for this eight ounce container here. Yeah. So we're gonna put that in here, see what it does. Looks like we get some action out of the bottom there a little bit, just as you can kind of see it fall and spread. I am drying off the dropper in between, just here with a towel, just to keep it as separated there as I can. Well, it looks like it will mix in for a minute here again. Looks like it mixed in there. It's all cloudy. Oh, there it comes. Drops right back out. So even when we're even when we're all mixed in, nice and good there. It's all all mixed in except it's cloudy. You can see it fall right back out of the solution at that point. So the the solution just <clears throat> even with the Startron at this point cannot cannot hold that. So it's falling back out. We're gonna try heat here. So this is what most people will go grab if their cars won't start you know if they feel that it's too cold and their fuel line froze go grab some heat throw it in there get that water out of the line or whatever this is a 12 ounce bottle costs about 319 uh, claims to treat 20 gallons with this so that's uh at a at a treatment at an eight ounce rate that's 1.11 milliliters per eight ounces so Go ahead and well, there we go. 1.1 milliliters. Alrighty. As it goes down, it looks like at the bottom it kind of blasted away. It's kind of cloudy there. 
kind of got a just a real hazy look to it if we blast all this away just trying to simulate mixing it up or the return line coming through and your fuel tank doesn't really matter what scale this is at it's all gonna act exactly the same so it looked like it went out there for a minute so it's all mixed back in kind of like the Startron was oop and then there it just falls right back out falls right back out of the solution Next we've got Phaser 3000. So this is a additive that we've used for a long time. It claims on here to prevent and reverse phase separation. This is one of the newer containers. It used to be in a 12 ounce container which was kind of a pain to measure out of and to sell to customers. But this one here is a eight ounce container, or I'm sorry, this one here is a 16 ounce container and it retails for $24.99. So it claims to treat 16 gallons, and that's at the prevention rate. So that's at a rate on here of one ounce to four gallons. But it also says complete phase, re complete phase separation reversal one bottle for every four to 12 gallons of gasoline. So what that means is that if we're, if we're using one bottle for every four gallons, at that rate, we're four ounces a gallon. So this may do only four gallons. Otherwise, it may do 64 gallons. And it depends on what you're using it for. If you're just using it for treatment to keep the phase separation from happening, one ounce to four gallons. But if you're reversing it, depending on how bad it is, one bottle for every four to 12 gallons of gasoline. So they give you kind of a broad range there. Put the heat back there. They give you kind of a broad range on what's going on there, but we'll see what happens here. So that's at, at one ounce per gallon, your point 462, or I'm sorry, at one ounce per four gallon, you're 0.462 milliliters per eight ounce. So, basically a half a milliliter per about a half a milliliter per. It looks like the bottom kind of stood up at attention there when we did that. I think that's maybe about all it did. Not seeing anything. It looks like it's kind of one of the same things. It's falling right back out there, just like all the others did. And now we've got mechanic in a bottle. So this here says it's for all gasoline engines and it fixes poor and non-running engines. Revitalizes stale gasoline cleans fuel injectors and carbs, fixes ethanol issues. So it says all gas engines, equipment, auto marine, do not drain gas tank, pour two ounces mechanic in a bottle per one gallon into the gas tank, start engine and run for at least 15 minutes. So I would assume they want it to circulate for a little while to get this to happen or something it looks like. So cleans carbon and varnish, helps raise octane it says. So we're gonna go ahead, this here, the mechanic in a bottle, it's a four ounce container. For a four ounce container, it was $9.29. It only claims to, to, it only claims to treat two gallons of gas. It's only a four ounce container. 
So not probably the best deal on that one out of these, but it's hard to tell if they don't if they work, then maybe they are the best deal. So let's get this open here. Alright, and on this one, so two ounces a gallon works out to 3.69 milliliters per eight ounces. That's the same as the SIPO. Quite a bit of it. So we're gonna do the 3.69. Alright. See what it does here. So it looks like it did something to the bottom there. It turned it colors pretty good, but I'm not sure exactly what that means at this point. Doesn't look like it. Well, you can definitely see that at the top it's a different color. It's a different color liquid going in, but it doesn't look doesn't look to be doing a whole lot for the water. The water is not staying separated out for long. Now it does say circulate in fuel system for 15 minutes. I'm not sure exactly what that would do. You know, besides agitate it kind of like this, making sure you're getting all the water, but by the time we come back to it, I'm sure it will have been sitting for a little while. So it's all nice and it's not clear, but it is back into the mixture there. Oh, and there it starts to fall out again. And there it starts to fall out. And it is cloudy up at the top. So you can see how the different ones are going here. We've got, it looks like the sea foam cleared completely back up on the top, but it's still got that layer of water on the bottom. Looks like the Startron is cloudy up top and water on the bottom. The heat's cloudy up top with water on the bottom. And then the phaser is partially cloudy on the top and water back down on the bottom. And then, yeah, the mechanic in a bottle. So it looks like at these dosage rates, which are the rates on the container, Seafoam does say you can add some more to it. Phaser says that you can use up to four ounces per gallon, which is quite a bit. But we're gonna go ahead and overdose all of these by five times now. So we've already, we've already dosed them at their original level they should be. Now we're gonna use five times what we're supposed to so we've got 3.69 milliliters we're gonna multiply that by five which equals 18.45 milliliters so we're gonna put 18.45 milliliters of sea foam in at this point That's the first there. It's 10. Doesn't look like it's really doing a whole lot there. It cleaned, cleaned up pretty good. That's 15. and about a half all right 18 and a half so that's another five times dosage there another five times dosage for the sea foam it looks to me here like this Yeah, so it separates out for a for a short period and then it just drops right back out of the bottom is what it looks like. Just drops right back out there. Oh, 
moments. It looks like this table's leaking down. Apparently that's been happening over the whole show here. Hopefully that wasn't too bad. Thought I had the one that didn't leak. Anyway, let's get the rest of these. So yeah, that's... So that's six times the dosage at this point is what we're at with the seafoam. Still has not separated out to where it needs to go. Right. The Startron here, it has 0.616 milliliters per eight ounce. So if you do 0.616 times five, you're gonna get three 0.08 milliliters. So we're gonna go ahead here. I'm gonna go ahead and put three milliliters in there. And see what that does for us. So Mix it up real good. You can see the water disperse back throughout. And then you start to see the blue at the bottom again. Starts to cloud right back up there, just like all of them had, drop right back out to the bottom. Now we've got the heat. So heat, if we do five times that, it'd be 5.55 milliliters total. That's what we're gonna want this to be. All right. You can see it kind of dance at the bottom there. Mixing it up real good. Again, the water dissipates, blends throughout, and gathers right back on the bottom. Phaser, let's go five times recommended here. Which also, let's see here. So if we're five times recommended, on this we're gonna be about two or so milliliters, maybe two and a half. Let's see what this says here. Okay, 2.3 milliliters is gonna be five times on the phaser. And that is still not what the max dosage is called for on this. The max dosage on this calls for 7.39 milliliters max. Now we've already put in 0.462. Now we're gonna put another 2.31 is going to leave us at about 2.77 milliliters total in here but we can put up to 3.69 milliliters it says for the phaser so we're going to start with five times the dosage like we've been doing with the other ones which is going to be 2.31 milliliters 2.3 there we are looks like it danced at the bottom there really good for a second
Does look like it's separated out at this point. Oh, there it goes. Drops right back out of the solution. All right, so let's go ahead on this one. Let's go ahead and go up to the 7.39 milliliters. So we've at this point put 2.77 in it. So that's going to leave us about another four and a half, just under four and a half milliliters that we can go for max dosage. So let's go ahead all the way to max dosage here, up to four and a half. So this is max dosage here that the phaser says. And it looks like, yeah, it looks like it's falling right back out of the bottom. Max dosage of phaser did not do it on that either. So we're already, we're at max dosage there. On these other ones, we're already at five times dosage. This one here, we're gonna get it up there. Five times dosage, that's gonna be at the same 15, 18, milliliters is the other one as the sea foam This is five times dosage with the mechanic in a bottle. kind of the same thing again looks like it's going out it turned pretty green but looks like it's gonna go out and then next thing you know falls right back out of the bottom again so let's go ahead and do another five times so that'll put us ten times the dosage on all of them I'm gonna do another 18 sea foam So that's sea foam at ten times dosage. Does look like it's mixed the water in there. And then we see it fall right back out again. <coughs> Star try. Let's do another three point three. Right. 
Falls right back out of the bottom there once again. Alright. Try the heat here. Gonna do another 5.5. Doesn't look like we're doing much there. The water's still separated out. Let's go back to the Startron. So we're at full dosage of the Startron. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna go dosage and a half. So we're gonna use at the max, max dosage, we're gonna use a dosage and a half. So we're gonna go ahead and put another about 3.6 milliliters in here. like it did kind of the same thing jumped again there down at the bottom and now it looks like it mixed it in It's still falling out the bottom there. All right. So let's go ahead with another 3.6. So this will be double. This will be double what they call for here. double for the phaser everything else is at 10x right now the only reason we were at double we're only at double for the phaser is because it has such a such a large quantity here as far as the milliliters I'm sorry as far as the max 7.39 milliliters max on this per 8 ounce so that's the only reason we're only at double now on this one everything else we're at 10x so it's still there at the bottom. It's still phase separated. It has not fixed the phase separated fuel. That's at double. So let's go triple here, another 7.39 milliliters. That's five. So this is triple the amount in the phaser at this point and everything else again still has 10 times it looks like it cleared up real good that time and then we still get fall right back to the bottom so let's jump it up to five times we're gonna put another 14.8 milliliters in there This is at five times solution here. Five times strength that they call for. And it looks like there, look at that, it jumped out. So we got it at five times strength here with the phaser. And you can see that the water has completely dropped out of it. So it's it hasn't dropped out. I mean, it's stayed um, suspended in it, which is what it claims to do. But at five times the amount that it says it's going to take to do it. 
Everything else, we've already went 10 times the amount with. They still haven't done it. We've got every single one of them here. Every single one still has water in the bottom of it. So the mechanic in a bottle, you know, it does tell you it wants you to gyrate it for 15 minutes or whatever. It doesn't matter what you do to this. It's not going to keep that water suspended. It does not work in that way. So I'm not sure, not sure exactly, exactly what they claim to do with this, but I've never had it work in any kind of test I've done. It seems like it's going to work and then it always drops right back out the bottom. So it, if you're putting it in there and mixing it up real well, it may get you through a decent time and get you back started and running good enough to get that bad gas out of there possibly you know but with the with the water going right back down to the bottom that's probably not going to happen because that's where all the water is being pulled out from anyway so it looks like uh we've got our answer it looks like the seafoam is not working the startron is not working and these are at 10 times dosages the heat is not working and the mechanic in a bottle is not working. The only thing here that actually works is the Phaser 3000. And it took approximately five times the amount to get that to work. So the question is, will this engine run with that in it? Well, this is a brand new engine here showed you we got a pretty good solution of, of water going there in that what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this phaser 3000 in this brand new engine it's never been ran tanks completely dry has absolutely nothing in it so this is a brand new engine Dry tank there, nothing down in there whatsoever. So what we are gonna put in there though, we're gonna go ahead and put this phaser in there. The fuel with the phaser in it, see if that fixes. See if that, see if that, if that were the case in this situation, see if we could have fixed this equipment. I spilled, spilled it all over the place, but the majority of it went down in there. Dry this up real quick, and I'll give it a whirl. Got it on choke there. It was on. Well, besides everything rattling all over the place and darn near off the table and everything else, it just shows you there that most of the things that we're trying to use here, as far as fuel treatments go, they just don't work. There's no reason to use them. They're a waste of money. So next time, maybe just use ethanol free or use the canned fuel. Better yet, switch out your gas very, very often. 
and that'll keep you from having these issues. This can be fixed, but at five times the rate with the phaser, that's going to be more expensive than going and getting you some top quality gasoline any day. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.